Yeah, so I was a pro bono lawyer. I ran a file for three years um, and got title for my clients. Uh, so my role as a pro bono lawyer in that project has ended, but I remain an advocate for land titles in North Preston. I'm pretty passionate about this project still, so that's how I stay involved now. I, I don't know that it's, you know, necessarily a violation of a law um, that the government has failed to, to provide title. It's certainly an example of overt systemic racism. I think you can see it through the gov what the government's done. So you look at land title in African Nova Scotian communities and they've got this legislative regime, the Land Titles Clarification Act, and that was passed in the 1960s. So we're 60 years later. You see the Land Titles Clarification Act 60 years in the running. There's no project of government moving in and assisting people with clarifying this title. Additionally, one of the other issues in terms of the systemic racism that you see is you've got government treating it as if it's an adversarial process, as if they're the application grantors that you have to you know, pass all these loopholes when really they could be going in and facilitating this process. To me, I think the biggest barrier is that the government refuses and continuously fails to proactively ask that community through their community navigators and through the manager who that they run through the Department of African Nova Scotian Affairs. They continue to fail to to heed their to heed what they're telling them, and to go into community and actually assist people. They hired two community navigators. They've got a manager of the community navigators, Lauren Grant, who's very very bright, and uh, everybody is trying to assist these clients um, who are trying to get their applications forward. What the government has failed to do is actually acknowledge that the problem sits with the people in their office who are administering the act. So the decision makers who are sitting in their office and the way in which the act is interpreted. And so what we've also seen after the funding announcement is government go to court and lose trying to enforce what's called what they had determined arbitrarily was a 20 year um, requirement for people to prove that it was their land that was never contemplated by the act. Uh, and government tried to say to an applicant who could prove that they had been on their in their property for 18 years, no, nope, you don't meet this 20 year threshold um, that we've decided appears nowhere in the act, uh, so we deny you. And that decision of the minister went through what's called a judicial review, which is an appeal. So government spent money going to court to defend this 20 year period, and they lost. So what you've got on the one hand is in 2017, government saying we're going to do everything we can to remove and reduce barriers to people getting title. And then you've got them in 2020 vociferously advocating for the opposite um, in court and losing. I think right now we live in a world where we can seize on an opportunity uh, where we know that systemic racism is a huge issue, not only in our province, but across North America, across, across the world. Um, and, you know, I, I think in terms of racism in Nova Scotia, we all have an obligation to each other and to the future and to future generations to deal with the wrongs. And I think that's the other thing that I've been trying to point out um, in some of my correspondence with the minister is what this actually is, a, is a beautiful opportunity to right a historic wrong. And I cannot for the life of me understand why government wouldn't seize on it. So I'm hesitant to say what I think the solution is specifically, but the solution lies in listening to those groups who have been doing that work for free. Uh, and in government actually paying local people um, as consultants to share that knowledge of the ways in which the, the process could be streamlined. You just don't have any certainty when you don't have title. You know, so my clients lived in their home, raised their kids in their home, had their grandkids in their home, and ne it was never theirs. Um, and so the certainty that you have when you have paper title confirmed by government means that you can 
deed your home to your kids. You can write a will that has clarity with respect to what property you're passing down. I mean, there are all kinds of advantages to, to property ownership. The fun, there's really great things that came out of the funding announcement, but there's a lot of long ways to go.